This lesson is an overview of the wireless LAN technology and the transition of the wireless LAN infrastructure as the demand for mobility and access changes. We start this module by reviewing some of the most common terms used in radio technology as it is applicable to wireless LANs. We look at how the wireless LAN technology has transitioned from the first occasional use of wireless hotspots. Most of today's wireless LAN infrastructure deployed is an overlay network made up of two disparate networks, wired and wireless, and we will evaluate how Avaya's next generation VINA Unified Access Architecture will shape and change the wireless control and switching functions in wireless LAN deployments. We will highlight some of the key wireless LAN standards and some of the common challenges faced when implementing a wireless LAN solution. Could you please start by reviewing some of the common terms used in radio technology? Sure. Just click on the red buttons to review some of the main terms. During the early implementation phase, wireless deployment was geared towards providing a convenient access method for occasional use, and different standards were used around the world. The access points were designed as standalone units with no provision for security, as the technology was new and mostly used to provide wireless hotspot solutions. As the technology evolved, the focus changed towards a more productive solution for data communication. The wireless solution standards were defined and implementation and adoption of the technology increased to a full Wi-Fi footprint overlay. The global demand for unified communications and the increase in converging data and voice over IP VOIP, created a need for reliability and performance. As the global transition in wireless LAN technology increased towards an all wireless access in the enterprise, the infrastructure had to support all applications. This new medium for unified communications included management of the wireless resources and provided mobility to users and wider unwired deployments. The increase in the use of wireless technologies also created a desperate need for increased security, not only towards the data and voice traffic on the network, but to protecting access to the network and the corporate data. The virtualization of controllers and preparing the wireless LAN infrastructure to support virtualization is key in providing solutions that scale and offer protection against future forklift upgrades to accommodate new technologies as they emerge. Most of today's networking infrastructure is made up of two disparate networks, wired and wireless. Both networks utilize the same wired infrastructure for all communications. The wireless design is based on a centralized architecture with thin access points that has no configuration information and is used to establish connection between the user device and the network. The access point establishes a secure path to the wireless controller for every user device that connects. The centralized dual function wireless controller performs the control functions for all the connections between the access point and the controller and functions as a switching point for all the data traffic. This implementation has many challenges as it is inefficient, not optimized for hardware and is not scalable. Network capacity is an essential requirement. Wireless LANs must have the ability to support the different types of applications running on new mobile devices and it is important that architectures evolve to meet the demands. Innovaya's next generation VINA Unified Access Architecture 
the wireless control and switching functions are split. The wireless data traffic can take the most optimal path directly from source to destination, eliminating the performance bottleneck inherent with traditional wireless controllers. The wireless control point can be implemented on dedicated hardware or it can be virtualized, where it can run on a virtual server rather than dedicated network hardware. This allows enterprises to reduce their hardware costs. For customers who use Avaya's LAN switching products, the value of this architecture is even more pronounced, as the wireless switching point can be implemented as a software function on Avaya's core and edge switches. Again, this eliminates the need for customers to procure additional hardware as wireless traffic grows. The data plane integration into our Ethernet switches is a reality. This is not just for the sake of the technology, but important for what it can provide to our customers as this future proofs their networks. It allows them to deploy a wireless LAN infrastructure that can last for the next 10 years, that can scale to meet the current explosion in mobile traffic. The overall cost is reduced as the wireless controller is not linked to specific hardware as it has become virtualized. The next generation of Vina Unified Access Architecture is a split plane architecture that is part of the Wireless LAN 8100 design and provides a unique solution to issues of scaling and reliability. This architecture allows the Wireless LAN data and Wireless LAN control traffic to take different paths and allows the traffic which does not require access to the wireless controller to flow through the shortest path between source and destination. What is an SSID? An SSID is a user-defined label used to identify the wireless network that is advertised by the access point. Extended Service Set ID, or ESSID, is when multiple APs advertise the same SSID. This helps stations discover and choose the right APs. It helps with roaming and serves to distinguish between multiple SSIDs configured on the same AP. What is a BSSID? Each cell has a unique BSSID, which is the MAC address that is assigned to the radio, so each radio can be identified individually. Typically, a radio has a block of MAC addresses so that each SSID on an AP maps to a unique MAC address. Early access points only supported a single BSSID. Multiple wireless LANs SSIDs, shared a single BSSID, which created a single broadcast multicast domain. Current access points support multiple BSSIDs. Access point radios have a pool of BSSID MAC addresses. Each wireless LAN SSID is assigned a unique BSSID. This creates individual broadcast multicast domains. It does not provide separate bandwidth. Could you please highlight some of the key wireless LAN standards? Since the release of the 802.11b version of the IEEE 802.11 standards that was released in 1997, there are also the 802.11a, 802.11g and 802.11n standards. Please click on the red buttons to see more details. What is the difference in use of the 2.4 GHz and the 5 GHz band? There are 14 channels defined for use by 802.11 in the 2.4 GHz ISN band. However, not all of the channels are allowed in all countries. 11 are allowed in the North American domain and 13 are allowed in Europe where the channels have been defined by ETSI. The ISM channels are spaced 5 MHz apart. The exception is the last two channels with 12 MHz spacing between them. 802.11b and 802.11g and 802.11n narrow channels 
use 20 MHz bandwidth per channel, but the channel separation of 5 MHz means that adjacent channels overlap, and therefore signals on adjacent channels will interfere with each other. What do you mean when you say channels overlap and interfere with each other? In the 2.4 GHz band, the 802.11 wireless LAN standards separate the channels by 5 MHz in most cases. The bandwidth is 22 MHz per channel. Although the nominal figures of 20 MHz are given, as a result, channels overlap and we find a maximum of 3 non-overlapping channels. The 22 MHz channel bandwidth holds for all standards, even though 802.11b can run at a variety of speeds, 1, 2, 5.5 or 11 megabits per second, and 802.11g can run at speeds up to 54 megabits per second. The differences are in the RF modulation that is being used. How are the channels used in the 5 gigahertz band? The 5 gigahertz band has substantially more capacity compared to the 2.4 gigahertz band. This is due to more non-overlapping radio channels and less radio interference. However, an 802.11n only network may be impractical for many users because they need to support legacy equipment. Consequently, it may be more practical in the short term to operate a mixed 802.11bgn network. Are all devices that claim 802.11n able to work in the 5 GHz band? No, not at all. The standard does not require that all the 802.11n clients support the 5 GHz band. It is important to know that the Avaya solution supports the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz band. Wireless LAN has two methods of frame aggregation. The first method is known as Aggregate Max Service Data Unit, AMSDU. Max Service Data Unit, MSDU, is the layer 3 to 7 payload of an 802.11 data frame. Each time a unicast 802.11 frame is transmitted, a certain amount of fixed overhead exists as a result of the physical header, MAC header and MAC trailer, interframe spacing and acknowledgement. Medium contention overhead also exists because of the time involved due to the requirement that each frame must contend for the medium. The second method of frame aggregation is known as Aggregate MAC Protocol Data Unit, AMPDU. One of the biggest differences when using MPDU aggregation is that all the 802.11 frames, MPDUs, do not have to have the same destination address. Also, the data payload of each MPDU is encrypted separately using the multiple dynamic encryption keys that are unique between the access point and each individual client. Much like MSDU aggregation, individual MPDUs must all be of the same 802.11e quality of service access category. MPDU aggregation has more overhead than MSDU aggregation because each MPDU has an individual MAC header and trailer. <laughs> All 802.11 unicast frames must be followed by an acknowledge ACK frame for delivery verification purposes. Multicast and broadcast frames are not acknowledged. An AMSDU contains multiple MSDUs all wrapped in a single frame with one MAC header and one destination. Therefore, only normal acknowledgements are required when using MSDU aggregation. However, an AMPDU contains multiple MPDUs, each with their own unique MAC header with multiple destinations. Each of the individual MPDUs must be acknowledged, and this is accomplished using a multiple traffic ID block acknowledgement, MTBA frame. As we have more channels available with 5 GHz, would it be possible to bond channels in order to gain more bandwidth? Yes, historically in cheaper products, channel bonding has been supported using proprietary methods known as Turbo Mode for 802.11a. 
and super G for 82 11 G. Channel bonding is the simple use of two adjacent non-overlapping channels to double the throughput. 82 11 N supports a similar capability called wide channels. Wide channels are very similar to channel bonding in that a full width of 2 by 20 MHz channels is used for a total of 40 MHz. However, wide channels are actually a little different and better than previous techniques of channel bonding because the guard between the two channels is actually used to carry additional signal. The net effect is that with 802.11n wide channels, it offers slightly more throughput than twice the amount of throughput over a narrow channel. However, as the 2.4 GHz band has only three non-overlapping channels, only two channels can be bonded to create one 40 MHz channel. As you can imagine, this is not often used in the 2.4 GHz band, but it is very popular with the 802.11n in the 5 GHz band. There is a drawback to using wider channels though. It relates to the physics of signal propagation and channel noise. The noise in a channel is proportional to the width of the channel. This may not seem intuitive, but the bottom line is that a wider channel suffers from a slightly higher noise level, and this means that a wider channel will have a slightly lower signal-to-noise ratio. This in turn means that a wider channel will have a reduced range of operation. Modern wireless LAN adapters support wide channel. In this example of an Intel adapter, there is a separate configuration parameter for each frequency band that the wireless device supports. Two configuration values are available for channel width, 20 MHz or auto. Choosing a 20 MHz channel width effectively disables the use of wide channels. If the access point is using wide channels, then the client adapter will only use the primary 20 MHz channel for communication. Note that the other devices may still use the full 40 MHz channel. Choosing auto will allow the access point to determine the channel width. If the AP supports channel bonding, then the channel width will be 40 MHz. If the AP does not, the channel width will be 20 MHz.